Nobody deceives like an addict. Hello and welcome to True Crime Rocket Science, the most authentic voice in true crime. Today's day 74 since five-year-old Summer Wells disappears from the East Tennessee area, approximately the Ben Hill Road section of the Beach Creek community. Now, on August 21st, really a week ago today, Grandma seemed to break her silence. I'm not sure if it was over one or several days. I think it was over a, a period. Um, she, uh, in a series of messages to the channel Crime Stories Obsessed, uh, that video has actually been posted a couple of hours ago. I'll put a link in the description. But it's quite a long video. It's over three hours long. And this is going to be a very short video just highlighting some of the pertinent facts from those Facebook messages from Grandma. Now, I have been saying for quite a while that it is essential that we hear from Grandma. Uh, she doesn't seem to want to talk uh, you know, verbally on, on YouTube or anything, but this is progress, the fact that she has communicated with someone in the true crime community, and kudos to Crime Stories Obsessed for getting this scoop, as it were. Before we begin with this episode, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do. You can click on the light blue icon on the bottom right of your screen. Like, share, leave a comment. And let's get started. So I've got a couple of pages of notes. It is really interesting thinking about grandma's perspective. If you think about it, she's lived through the tragedies of Rosemary Bly, her, her one daughter, in a, in a weird way, I think she's also lived through the um, perhaps maltreatment, mistreatment, um, and other things of her other daughter, Candace, and then Summer as well. So it's, it's really three different family members that have kind of gone through the washer, and, and Grandma has been there. And I think um, if it, this triggers anyone, it, it, it triggers her more than anyone else. She said something really interesting in her correspondence with Crime Stories Obsessed, she said, his mouth is going to put him where he belongs, meaning Don's mouth is going to put him where he belongs. And I guess where Grandma thinks Don belongs is, where do you think that is? She's also, she also said, I'm beginning to think he's involved, um, which I, th I find kind of a little bit disingenuous. Would you really be beginning to think that Don might be involved, um, you know, on August 21st. Would it take you that long to begin to think about it? So there's a kind of a dark deja vu in, in all the things that are going on. Apparently, Grandma is at her sister's. Uh, uh, she's visiting her sister ostensibly because her sister's, sister's husband, her brother-in-law, had a heart attack. But I don't think that is really why she's there. I think she doesn't want to be near Don. I think she she did say in one of her messages to Crime Stories Obsessed that she left because she was feeling stressed and depressed. And she probably is being triggered by a lot of bad memories. So good for her for getting out. Of course, Candace is still there. And Candace has kind of got to stay there if she wants to see her boys again. Grandma also let slip that she turned 60 years old as her birthday last May 1st. So uh, around about six weeks before Summer went missing. She also acknowledges that she took the last photo or the last um, photo video uh, where Summer is un unconscious in the vehicle on the back seat. To me, that was never in dispute. I know a lot of people wanted to make kind of a fuss about it. It doesn't sound like grandma. Where's their proof that it's grandma? Well, I don't know. To me, it is quite obvious. Grandma also said that I don't think, she said, I don't think Don was at work the whole day that day. Uh, she also said that she thinks, that, that Don thinks about women, um, that they don't know anything. He thinks that um, women don't know anything and uh, Candace seems quite bitter about that. Candace seems to be quite um, not on really good terms with Don and vice versa. He is always putting Candace down, according to Grandma. Um, Grandma also says, scoffs at the idea that Don doesn't drink. 
Um, she, according to her, Don does drink, drinks whiskey and uses a particular drug of choice. I'm not going to mention it here, but it starts with a C. She also said that I think his, his sister, I think that's really his stepsister. Um, in her opinion, she thinks his sister should press charges on him. And then um, she was asked whether she heard any screams. Don recently said that uh, the neighbor heard screams and uh, Grandma said she didn't hear any screams. And then she was asked whether Don has um, a, a truly religious side to him. Is that side to him genuine? And she responded quite emphatically, hell no. I don't know whether you could answer that in a better way than that. But certainly that's also something I believed all along as well. Um, she also claimed that she got her daughter off meth a long time ago, something that Candace also, um, uh, you know, uh, emphasized it to her daughter in a message a couple of weeks ago. Uh, well, that certainly came up a couple of weeks ago. I think it was sent um, some time ago. Um, I don't know if that means that that Candace is absolutely clean um, and I also wonder whether grandma you know you know does she use substances at all um, given that the people around her would be doing so quite regularly I also thought it was quite interesting that crime stories obsessed said something early on that she doesn't have a position she doesn't know what really happened here and of course if you want to have access to grandma and all these sort of people you've got to take that position You've got to sort of feign either ignorance or feign that you're not quite sure or you're not going to say what you think. And um, a as a result, it leads to either a perception of apologia or actual apologia. Um, interestingly, she was asked about what she remembered from the, the day in question, June 15th, and Grandma said pretty much verbatim everything that, that her daughter said. She said that they did a load of clothes, I think that the boys helped them carry groceries into the house, uh, that they planted a cactus. I think, according to Candace, they planted flowers, so it's flowers, cactus. She also put ice on her knee. She said that she gave some peppermint candy. All of this is obviously backed up by Candace's version, and you, you do get a strong sense that Grandma is backing up Candace very um, strongly there's a lot of solidarity there but uh, Candace I think is also backing up Don then something that I thought rang really not true and, and to her credit Crime Stories Obsessed picked up on this where grandma said that she witnessed Candace coming out of the basement coming up the stairs and she was crying hysterically you know you know realizing in that moment that someone was missing, someone was gone and, and crying. And that just isn't very credible. You, you wouldn't immediately realize that you would first search around. You would search, you would first verify that she definitely isn't around. Grandma also went on to say, I don't know what you think. I'm worried about what everyone is thinking. Uh, well, sorry, I think she just said, I don't know what to think. I do think she's worried about what people are thinking. But I think she is perhaps in denial in some respects herself. And then coming on to the final page of the notes that I've taken, according to Grandma, he plays mind games with her, meaning Don plays mind games with Candace, according to Grandma. He, she also describes her daughter as bipolar. That's something we didn't know. One does get a sense of that, that Candace can be very quiet, very mute in fact and then also very loud and very extroverted and um, she also acknowledges that it looks like Candace is standing by him meaning standing by Don then a really interesting point was and a, and a very good thing asked by the channel um, crime stories obsessed was what is the last thing Summer said to to you meaning grandma and apparently it was I love you grandma you believe that I guess it's possible but when I think it's also got to think about the context of that was it at the swimming hole that she would have said that after she was given a candy when when was that said and you would that's something else you would kind of want to get the information on um, what was the situation in more clarity 
Um, I'm not quite sure what was said about the tuna fish casserole. I don't know if grandma was making that while they were having the conversation. I certainly haven't listened to the whole three hours. I was just trying to get to the statements that grandma made. And then uh, a, a final thing I want to highlight here is grandma saying, I'm hoping they arrest him before I get back. Um, because then um, Candace will get the kids back. And I think what she means by that is that she's hoping that Don is arrested before she gets back so that Candace can get her kids back and that I guess she can see them as well. So it's kind of a mixed bag. I think some of what Grandma reveals is quite interesting. Some of it is in a way not surprising. She's backing up her daughter. The version that she gives is pretty much the same. The only thing I think that is faintly a surprise is that there's no love lost between the two, is there? Grandma really doesn't like Don and Grandma isn't really where she is because of the sister's husband that's had a heart attack. I mean, that was an excuse. I think she's there because she wants to be there. Put it this way, she doesn't want to be at Ben Hill Hell. And I think the question is, when will she return? Will she re return? And if she doesn't return, what about Candace? Will Candace be vulnerable? What will happen between the relationship between Don, who's quite volatile, it seems, and Candace, who can also be quite temperamental? Time will tell. I will be doing some further analysis of the Sermon on the Mount, so look out for that. Thank you for listening. Have a great weekend, and I'll see you guys next time. Thank you.